medical student from the University of Bumerdes, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude for the University of Vijay and more particularly for the organizing committee for having granted me the opportunity to take part in this conference. So as concerned the topic of my presentation, I've chosen to discuss the role of civic education in producing competent future citizens. Communities have long had an interest in the development of an informed, uh, effective, and responsible citizenry. Uh, civic education has become a central concern in democratic uh, societies, uh, which uh, require to be constantly sustained by citizens who are well equipped with the requisite civic knowledge, skills, and dispositions. The role of civic education then is to foster and nurture those skills through well-planned learning strategies targeted to prepare students for a democratic lifestyle by shaping their political attitudes and civic behaviors. In this presentation, therefore, I would like to shed light on the most influential uh, strategies or learning strategies of civic education in EFL teaching and uh, learning that if implemented by knowledgeable mentors will eventually produce uh, competent future citizens ready to, uh, ready to ensure productive, vigorous uh, and peaceful democratic societies. Such strategies uh, may include cooperative learning activities, uh, developing the skills of monitoring and influencing public policy by attending public meetings, for instance, participating in civic uh, organizations, uh, or bringing community leaders into the classroom to discuss issues with students. Those strategies uh, will, in the long run, enhance students' traits of private and public character such as moral responsibility, self-discipline, and respect for the worth and human dignity, as well as those of, private, of a public character, namely civility, respect for the rule of law, public spiritedness, critical mindedness, and the willingness to listen, negotiate, and, negotiate, and compromise, which are tremendously crucial to democracy's success. So let's elaborate further on the traits of private and public character. Those uh, dispositions uh, could include uh, becoming, for instance, becoming an independent member of society, which encompasses adhering voluntarily to self-imposed standards of behavior rather than inquiring the imposition of uh, external controls, uh, accepting responsibility for the consequences of one's actions and fulfilling the moral and legal obligations of membership in a democratic society. Also, assuming the personal, political, and economic responsibilities of a, a, a citizen. Such responsibilities might include taking care of oneself, supporting one's family, and caring for, nurturing, and educating one's children. They also include being informed about public issues, voting, paying taxes, serving on juries, performing public service, and serving in leadership positions commensurate with one's talents. Also, respecting individual worth and human dignity. When I say respecting others, this entails listening to their opinions and behaving in a civil manner. Also, considering the rights and interests of fellow citizens and adhering to the principle of majority uh, rule, but uh, uh, at the same time recognizing the right of the minority to dissent participating in civic affairs in a thoughtful and effective manner. This disposition entails becoming informed prior to voting or participating in public debate, engaging in civil and reflective discourse and assuming leadership when appropriate. It also entails evaluating whether and when one's obligations as a citizen require that personal desires and interests be subordinated to the public good and evaluating whether and when one's obligations or constitutional principles obligate one to reject certain civic expectations promoting the healthy functioning of constitutional democracy. 
Uh, such disposition encompasses being informed and attentive to public affairs, learning about and deliberating on constitutional values and principles, uh, monitoring the adherence of political leaders and public agencies uh, to those values and principles, and taking appropriate action if adherence is lacking. This disposition also inclines the citizen to work uh, uh, through peaceful legal means to change rules that are thought to be unwise or unjust. Now the question is how can civic education strengthen and complement the development of character? Effective civic education programs should provide uh, students with multiple opportunities uh, for the development of uh, desirable traits of public and private character. Learning activities such as the following tend to promote character traits needed to participate effectively. For instance, uh, civility, traits of uh, civility, courage, self-discipline, persistence, concern for the common good, uh, respect for others and other traits relevant to citizenship uh, can be promoted through cooperative learning activities and in-class meetings, student councils, simulated public hearings, mock trials, mock elections, and student courts. Self-discipline, respect for others, civility, punctuality, personal responsibility, and other character traits can be fostered in school and community service learning projects, uh, such as tutoring younger students, uh, caring for the school environment, and participating in voter registration drives. Recognition of shared values and a sense of community can be encouraged through celebration of national and state holidays and celebration of the achievements of classmates and local citizens. Attentiveness to public affairs can be encouraged by regular discussions of significant current events. Reflection on ethical considerations can occur when students are asked to evaluate, take, and defend positions uh, on issues that involve ethical considerations, which means issues concerning good and bad, right and wrong. Civic-mindedness uh, can be increased if schools collaborate uh, with uh, uh, civic organizations, bringing community leaders into the classroom to discuss issues uh, with students and provide opportunities for students to observe and are to participate in those civic uh, uh, organizations. To conclude, in a democratic society, the possibility of effecting social change is ever present if citizens have the knowledge, the skills, and the will to bring it about. That knowledge, those skills, and the will are necessary traits of private and public character are the byproduct of a good civic education. Students will be more likely to achieve personal goals for themselves and their families, their, as well as the goals that they desire for their communities, state, and nation, if they are well-informed, effective, and responsible citizens. Thank you for your attention.